we'll make a start. Um, I'm Therese Bird, and I'm a learning technologist from the University of Leicester. Um, and why am I speaking to you today about iBooks, iTunes, and the learning materials revolution? <laughs> because I worked on a project that was called Spider that was um, sharing practice with iTunes U digital educational resources. Just about got that. Um, it was a project that was funded by um, uh, some bodies that were looking at open educational resources and looking at iTunes U as a channel of open learning resources, which itself was contested. And I spent most of the time working on this project, arguing with people that iTunes U really could be OER um, because, oh, Apple is closed and all this stuff. And um, so, you know, it, that argument continues, but uh, that's not what my, my point here is. But um, because of that project, I was able to um, learn how universities were launching iTunes U. iTunes U is not only university, but the partners that I worked with to get information were the Open University, Oxford, and Nottingham. Um, Leicester has not yet launched our iTunes U channel, but we will um, this year, I hope. <laughs> if anyone from Leicester is watching, that's my prediction. Um, so basically, I was looking at it from um, a kind of an institutional strategy um, point of view of how to sort of showcase the university and share out materials. But in the process, it was last January when Apple launched their new iBooks and kind of a new iTunes U approach. And so basically I had to kind of quickly school up and see what are they doing. So this uh, presentation will give you an overview, really what is iTunes U and what's with this whole iBooks thing and iPads and can we make sense of it all. So can I just get a show of hands? How many of us here use iTunes? Okay, um, that's a majority. Um, how many of us use iTunes U? Okay, not too many. Um, how many of us have heard of iTunes U? Okay, a few more. So some of us have heard of it and don't use it. Okay, and that's all fair enough. Um, I think one reason is that um, universities, at least, are kind of loath to put iTunes onto their university desktop. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. We haven't got it on ours yet, but we will. We will. Okay, so basically, I'm going to go through three sections, just some iTunes U uh, FAQs, which I find to be helpful, um, especially for people who aren't users of it, and we didn't have too many users of iTunes U, so I'll spend a bit of time on that, and look at some ebook trends, and I've also got some information on how to make um, ebooks for different devices. Um, I've got some links in here to some YouTube videos that actually show you how to do that, and I've I didn't have the foresight to bring them out, but I've actually got some handouts that show you how to make ebooks using an open source um, software called Caliber. So, okay, iTunes U is um, it's the free subset of iTunes. It's the last one. If you look all the, if you look at the top in the black, you see music, films, TV programs, da 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 da. da. Second to the last one is iTunes U. The U stands for university. It actually kind of secretly launched before 2007 um, in the United States. This was when Duke University and Stanford, some of these guys were starting to use podcasts and were use, handing out iPods uh, to their first years. And Steve Jobs gathered a bunch of these university guys into his office once and said, here's some iPods. How do you think we could use these in learning? And they just kind of were brainstorming. And basically, eventually, that was how iTunes U was formed. Um, it was originally... Uh, these universities were streaming out their recorded lectures to just their students. But in 2007, it was launched where at least a portion of those were streamed out to the world. And then it opened up to video and um, as well um, PDFs and now EPUB as well. Um, it opened up in the United Kingdom. I can't remember exactly when. I think it was 2008. Um, here's a picture of Beijing Open University. There's at least three or four Chinese universities on there. Europe, it's spreading a lot. Mexico, I haven't yet seen any um, countries from the continent of Africa or South America. And, and in fact, I emailed my Apple rep last week to ask when, but um, maybe they just haven't asked yet. Um, also, there's, it's not only universities. This is uh, the site from the American Association of Neurological Surgeons. There's also a section um, where there's colleges, where there's primary schools, 
where there's, um, it's called Beyond Campus. So we've got here um, the historic royal palaces. Um, this is all, basically this site is all of Scottish education except for higher education. The rest of them have gotten together um, uh, just to, you know, have different um, uh, curriculum, you know, where it, where it matches the national curriculum, they're sharing out materials. A lot of the states in the United States have sites because each of the 50 states has their own uh, curriculum. So you'll have a Florida site for education and, you know, Massachusetts. <clears throat> Okay, so just a very quick iTunes. iTunes is kind of confusing because it's a store, but it's also an application that sits on your computer. Yes, Windows as well, Windows and Macs. It's free. You just go to Apple, download it. It does not have one for Linux. That's a minus in my book, but anyway, that's how it is. Um, when you download it, all the file is, there's nothing magical. They're MP3s, they're MP4s, and they're PDFs or EPUBs. There's really nothing locked down about them. You can pull them out and use them. Um, just to quickly show you what it looks like, I wish I had a pointer or a, something, but... Um, okay, so if you look in this lower section in the big window, it says elementary podcast all series, yeah? And then it says get all. You just click there and then you've subscribed to the whole thing. Now I clicked there and so I have subscribed and so I can see the listings underneath. Um, so I can just click the individual ones that I want, yeah? And then you can also get further information about it. Um, there's little icons. For example, you can see so, just above there, simple analysis of cost per job, save, blah, blah. There's a little icon next to it that looks like a, um, a monitor. That means that's a video. These other ones with these little icons, Series 3 Podcast 18 Transcript with that little icon, that means that's an e-book because it looks like a book. The ones that have no icon means that it's a sound file, so it's just audio. And then basically you just download it and then you've got it in your computer. Oh wait, I'm just going to show you one more thing, just go back. Um, so over on the left, this left column, the upper part says library, yeah? And you see music, movies, TV shows, da da da, and then second part says store. Well if you stick with the upper part, that's what's on your computer, okay? So once you've downloaded it, that's where you look for your stuff. So it's, it gives you a window to the Apple site and all the stuff you can get from Apple. And you, by the way, you don't need an Apple login to get iTunes U stuff, um, you know, unlike the other section of iTunes. Um, but when, when, once, so w once you've downloaded it, then it's in the library up at the top. And I, I find it helpful to point these things out because otherwise it's confusing. Okay, and once you um, get into using iTunes U, Go for that uh, section over the, what I put the, the arrow to, um, which is the power search. You can click on universities and colleges or beyond campus or kindergarten to 12, which is um, up to age 18. So those are the different three uh, categories. And if you go in there, you can sort it by country. So I really recommend um, searching by it that way. And once you do um, get into there, for example, I typed in the English Civil War and I got these results. If I had simply typed in English Civil War up in the um, search in the very upper right of the window, which is your normal place to go and type it in, that searches all of Apple stuff. And I guarantee you what I would have got as a first hit would have been the Clash album, English Civil War. So, um, <laughs> but so if you go into the iTunes U section and search, it narrows down your search. <laughs> okay. So what's the difference um, between iTunes U and YouTube? Well, there's a lot here, and I'm not sure that I have time to go through every single cell here, but um, basically any university that launches iTunes U tends to have a YouTube channel as well. Now, it's a myth to say that Google will not find stuff in iTunes U. I think that used to be true maybe three years ago or older, but today it is not true. Somehow Apple has figured out some way that when you Google stuff, you get this page um, that just kind of points you right to iTunes U. And you click on it and it says, you don't have iTunes on your computer if you don't. Um, here's how to download it. Or if you do have it, it just launches right up. So yes, Google does find stuff in iTunes U. YouTube is of course easier to publish in. Um, iTunes U is a little harder, but it's not that much harder once you kind of get your head around. Um, you just basically have to have a big server 
and you have to write um, something like an RSS feed that tells Apple where to look for your stuff. That's assuming that you have got the stuff saved on your own server in your university. You can use Apple servers as well for free. All of this is free. Yes, Apple, you can, you can have them serve out all your stuff for free. Um, let's see. Both of them will uh, let you know if it's CC. Apple has just begun to cater for uh, Creative Commons. YouTube started that before they did. Um, I think one of the difficulties with YouTube is that you can start out by looking in YouTube uh, education stuff, but once you start searching, YouTube just puts all the ads in your face and puts all, um, you know, I was searching on stuff about uh, autism a few weeks ago, and I, the first few hits I got on YouTube were really, really good. They were good lectures. And then it started sh showing me stuff about Tom Cruise and his um, ideas about psychiatry and just kind of whatever garbage was, was coming up. That, so that's the difficulty I find with YouTube is you kind of can't control what, they, what it puts in your face. Whereas with iTunes U, <clears throat> you can say, look, I just want to search the education stuff. Um, of course, YouTube is only video, but iTunes U are these various. And one other important thing to know is that with iTunes U, you can watch it without downloading it to your computer, or you can download it to your computer, which is great, then you do not have to be connected to the internet to watch it, which is very important. It's because the software is also a player. It plays your sound and your video. So in case you're you know, on the train or something, you don't have a connection, you can still watch your stuff, unlike YouTube. Um, let's see. Also, YouTube, of course, is banned in a lot of countries. I'm not aware of any place that bans iTunes U except possibly the Sudan. Um, and also, iTunes U started out being mobile ready because it started out being you know, for iPods. So it's already mobile ready. So how are universities making use of iTunes U? Well, basically, um, as I kind of already said, serving out your current learning kind of like as a supplementary to the VLE. Um, but these days, really, what they're kind of using it for is marketing, um, because you can profile yourself so well there. Um, Martin Bean, the uh, VC of the Open University, said, it's the great learning material that brings the registrations. And they, cl they watch like a hawk. Who clicks on iTunes U, and then do they click to the registrations? And I saw the numbers, and the numbers are very good. I'm not allowed to say what they are, because that's commercially sensitive. But um, they were not really using YouTube very much. They were only using iTunes U, and they were getting, I'll just say, um, definitely in the hundreds per year of people going to register because of iTunes U. Then they saw, oh, let's use U uh, YouTube as well. And then they, when they beefed up their YouTube channel, they got a lot of registrations off of that as well. So that's just a tip. A lot of people use it not just for recorded lectures. Of course, the Open University doesn't have recorded lectures. Um, so they take... They take uh, people who are doing research and just have them show some of their research. Um, you know, what am I, what's my project group working on for three or four minutes? Put that as a little research vignette video or sound. Uh, this is how my university is really getting interested in using it. I've seen people put up stuff about their special collections from their library. Um, the download numbers are what really make it amazing. Um, since the Open University launched their site, they are, they're number one. They've beat out all the U.S. universities. University of Oxford has got very good download numbers as well, and they're interesting because Oxford keeps it really low tech. They just do audio recordings of their lectures. That's pretty much all they do. They're starting to do e-books now as well, but they don't do anything fancy. They just give you know, a digital recorder to the lecturer when he's about to start. Just press the red button, and then you just take it and stick it on iTunes U, and it's, um, it's very low tech. And for my project, I did a Twitter analysis of, I was watching what people were saying about what they were uh, learning from iTunes U, why they liked it. Interestingly, the topics that they seem to be really hungry for are the subjects that are being cut. Humanities, politics, um, philosophy. These seem to be the things that people are really hungry for. Um, international reach. Now, Apple, gives very, Apple will give the, the institution good data as to who's downloading from where. And so this is from the Open University. Um, I only have data up into January of this year. But um, the largest single country is the United States, and that has been very good for enrollment for the Open University. I am at liberty to tell you. 
Um, and what's also interesting is the rest of the world. This means uh, two, the countries that were too small to show up on their own. Um, I mean, on my data, I was getting people from Mauritius, people from Afghanistan, people from South Africa who were consuming these materials. Um, and also, well, we know that Twitter is blocked in China, so I, when I was doing my data, I couldn't see how they were using it in China, so I signed up to Weibo, and um, as you can plainly see, um, the Chinese people just love iTunes. <laughs> I'm sure you can read this. Um, my friend actually translated this for me, and um, one of the things is, in the Open University one, they're saying, um, how can universities make money if we're giving away our materials for free? So it was a discussion like that. Um, okay, so now going on to the trends section, um, th this is a report that just came out. I've got the links at the end of my, um, my presentation so you can get this report if you like, but it's Magritte Associates. It's good reading. Basically, okay, tablet adoption has exploded to 31%, up from 12% in 2011. That 31% is 31% 31 of American users of the Internet now have tablets. Okay, that's what that is. Um, so it, it, obviously it's increased a lot in the last year. And um, Android is growing. Now this is interesting. So like in 2011, it was basically iPad all the way. But suddenly, because of the Kindle Fire, which we cannot get yet in the UK, um, you can see that Android has jumped up in the tablet market. What seems to have been the trend for, for a while now is that tablets were basically Apple, 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 and phones were Apple at first, but then Android kind of pulled ahead. And that's, I think that is still the case. Um, so it remains to be seen about um, where it's going. But I still think Apple does seem to have the edge with, with the iPad in education. Okay, this was another report. Um, the, in the United States, there's a lot, there's a big movement towards going to e-textbooks. And that's because even in primary school, um, kids have to buy these heavy textbooks. And I mean, I remember this. I grew up in the States. And, um, and it's, it's expensive. Now, at the public schools, you don't get charged for it. But when you go to university, you pay big money for these textbooks that you are required to buy. So um, the idea of e-books should have revolutionized, but unfortunately, some of the numbers are saying that it's, so far, students have only saved about $12 per academic year. Um, and why is that? Because the e-books really aren't priced as low as they should be. And we do know that there's been uh, monopoly wars and Apple has been charged with price fixing, which they vociferously deny, and it's still kind of going on. So, um, so we'll see. It's not a quite a slam dunk yet in terms of um, e-textbooks. But in terms of creating your own materials, now that's a different story. Um, one thing that is also happening is that Apple is dropping their prices. And because of that, uh, this is another study that just came out. One third now of U.S. high school students now own iPhones. Um, and I think that's because you could get, I mean, my daughter got an iPhone for, without paying any money, and she just pays... 15 pounds monthly, and that's the iPhone 3G, okay, that's the old one. And they've dropped the prices on the older iPads. You can still get an iPad 2 for 329 pounds. So Apple is trying to position themselves. They have good stuff, but try to make it more affordable. Um, so where's things going in iPads and learning? So over 600 American school districts, so that means big chunks of areas, are using iPads. Uh, I'm from Chicago, and I know the Chicago public schools have basically bought into iPads wholesale. I'm going there this summer, and I want to see this for myself. Um, I know that the UK universities are very interested in iPads. We've seen iPads all around here. I just was in a great workshop at lunchtime with um, the students who were playing music on their iPads. Um, and these were students with accessibility issues where the iPad is really king. Um, I'm on the Association for Learning Technology use, uh, mailing group, and all I can say is this, in the year 2012, basically they're just talking iPads. It's iPad, iPad, iPad. Most universities are running some sort of pilot. For us at Leicester, we're launching um, a program. This, it, sorry, it already launched. It's a distance program. The students are in conflict zones and um, unlikely to, be, to get a wired connection to the internet for more often than about once a month. So we sent them iPads. The, the stuff is on the iPad, 
And all they have to do is once a month get under wireless and update and get the latest information. So far, it's working really well. OK, um, so how do you make some ebooks? Just very quickly, um, there's a program called Pages that is Mac only. It's very cheap. It costs about 20 or 30 pounds. I can't remember exactly. It's sort of like the Mac version of uh, Word, which, well, of course, you can get Word for Mac. But it's a Mac only. It's, it opens as a Word file. And as you can see, I was fiddling around. And I could go export. And the, in, the, in the window there, I could choose EPUB. And EPUB, of course, is the open source um, one that all the e-readers, and including an iPad, will read EPUB. The only one that doesn't is Kindle. Um, and it's very easy. You just drag in your multimedia, and then they just click Export to EPUB, and then you've got this really nice EPUB ebook, which has built-in video, built-in audio, and it's pretty fancy, and it's not expensive. InDesign also does this. I think you can get InDesign for Mac as well. It's an expensive piece of kit because it's a professional software, but this one you can use as well. Um, Another, way, another route you could go is the Apple iBooks author, which is free. Um, and it gives you templates, and it is super easy. I mean, this is a picture of the first um, iBook I ever made using it. It took me about 10 minutes, and that was to even figure it out because I just launched it. And I'm not really very good with learning stuff for the first time, so I was poke, poke, poke. Still, in 10 minutes, I had my first iBook. Um, this, one's, it, this one saves as dot iBook. So this one is Apple exclusive but it's very easy and nice. Now, just to let you know where iTunes is going, now iTunes has courses. And this is the big announcement that they made last January. Um, so if you launch I, um, iTunes on your iPad, it looks like this. And that looks quite different from the first window that I showed you. Um, because they're trying to, I think, basically, Apple is trying to sort of push the idea of reading materials that are iPad only, OK? That's in their commercial interest, and that's what they're trying to do. And you do kind of, we do have to face that fact, you know. It's great, iTunes U, it's, it's pretty much open. But of course, they've got their commercial interest, and they would love people to be buying more iPads. And that's what's going on here. Um, so, you know, it looks like a book, but if I click on that, like I happen to know that, that uh, picture of Shakespeare up in the upper corner, if I click on that, that's actually just a sound file. But they're using this book look, probably to just kind of encourage you to start putting more text things. Um, this is their definition of a course. So think of it as something like a module. But basically, it's very easy to put, um, put a course together. The idea is that you bring in your sound, you bring in your videos, and you bring in your written learning materials, and it all makes this nice package that runs easily on your iPad, and it's easy for any instructor to do. And it looks like this. Once you launch it on your iPad, so you can see, it's a little fuzzy, but the top one says video intro. If you click on that, it actually is a video. It's like a two-minute video about the sun. This is a sun book from uh, the Open University. Uh, I think the moon is, it was the number one download in all of iTunes U. Um, but the sun book is, well, is good as well. Um, these various learning outcomes, and this is completely free. And so I do not know yet if anybody is using this for like MOOCs, but it's entirely possible. OK, so how do you make one of these? Well, in order to make one of these course things, yes, you have to be an iTunes U. So this is something that's just for iTunes U people. Can I just ask, is anybody here working? Is anybody here with an institution that's in iTunes U? OK, good. <laughs> um, so I'm not telling you something you don't know. Um, I'm going to just play you a very short clip of someone from the Cedars School of Excellence. And I don't know if, you know if you've heard of them, but they are one to watch. The Cedars School of Excellence, they're um, in Scotland. They are the world's first one iPad per child program. And um, it's, a, it's a private school, independent school. Um, and this guy has started to record his own kind of how-tos of how to do this stuff in iTunes U, which is very helpful to me because I got to learn myself how to do this. So um, at this point, I am going to jump out of here and just play a little bit of the video. Now, the sound is bad at first, but it, it gets loud after just a few, um, a few seconds. And at least you can see um, 
basically this is within this uh, manager software that you get from Apple. And so you could just see, you just fill in the name of the course, um, you fill in the category. So Apple has predefined categories, literature, science and technology, blah, blah, blah. Um, you could choose your level, um, high school, kindergarten, middle school. So I'm gonna try to get this going now. He gets louder. <laughs> the course description is very important. It's used in the iTunes store to describe the course, and it's also used in the iTunes app on iOS. Notice this license down here. About what the course will contain. The next choice is the course type. Is it self-paced or an in-session course? If it's self-paced, you choose how long the course will be, and if it's in session, you choose the start and end dates, and then there's a license choice as well. Once the course is saved, you're taken back to Course Manager, and you can click on the course's name to edit its content. You start on the info pages, and two are already created, the overview and the instructor pages. And then there's a course outline for you to fill in about the contents of the course. You can type directly into the web page, or you can paste multiple lines of text from another application. When you're done, click Save Outline. Okay, so um, that is... Um just a bit of a, click of a clip of how to build the course. Um, and I recommend that. Um, he's on iTunes U. So you can just go and get his other tutorials on there. Um, but what about other devices? Um, you know, what if I can't, what if, what if, you know, iPads are expensive. What if we can't do an, one iPad per child? Or what if um, we can't work out a system where, um, where I could guarantee that the students are gonna have iPads? Yeah, exactly. If we have a, you know, any other model, we've got to cater for these other things. So in that case, I recommend Calibre. Calibre is free. Um, it runs on Windows, Macs, and Linux. Um, and it's a very simple bit of software by which you can take a document, let's just say a Word document, and um, you can save it into these various different um, uh, formats. So Mobi is for Kindle, EPUB is everything else, and iPads read EPUB. Of course, there's always PDF. Can I just say, PDF, it, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna diss PDF. PDF, PDF has its place, but the problem with PDF on these devices, if you don't know this yet, um, you know, PDF is kind of like written in stone, it's set in stone, and so it doesn't flow. The device wants to make, wants to, um, uh, you know, the device wants to give you the option to make the font bigger. The device wants to show it to you in a way that you can customize. With PDF, you do not have that option. Um, and that's why I got my iPad. I got the old version. And because I was gonna get a Kindle, but to me, a Kindle did not show PDFs very well. But an iPad does show PDFs very well. And so I got my iPad to be a you know, ebook reader. Um, so, okay, now I'm gonna show you another video clip. And this comes from our JISC funded program, uh, Duckling, which ended in 2010. And it was, we used um, ebook readers, and these were very early versions of ebook readers because we bought them in tw 2009. We loaded materials, the materials that would have simply gone onto the VLE. We used Caliber to change them into EPUB, put them onto these Sony e readers, and ship them out to our distant students. We found that the, um, we saved a lot of money because we used to ship out a lot of heavy books, which is expensive getting shipped to Taiwan, you know, and the ebook reader. Cost, at that time, that one cost 150 pounds, but still, we saved money. And even with the time for me to figure out and load all this stuff up, we still uh, save money. So if you want to find out more about it, you can just look up Duckling Lester, and you can find it. But I'm just going to show you just a uh, quick bit of video of how to do it. So we could just, you know, jam loads of materials on here. These devices hold your place 
And so the students said it was great. I could just pick up where I was, you know, yesterday and just make use of 10 minutes really well, whereas I would have been fiddling with the papers during that time. So they used terms like, it revolutionized my study skills. How does one turn your Word document handout into an ebook ready document? You have your Word doc or docx, you just go save as and you save it as an HTML. Go on Google, put in Calibre, C-A-L-I-B-R-E, and download it, it's free. You just launch that up and um, you import your um, HTML file into Calibre. Then you plug in your ebook reader into your computer and Calibre will see this and then you just say, put this onto my device. And voila, it appears and it works. You know, EPUB is, is a, um, it's, it's a commonly used format now. And um, VLEs should be having their documents in EPUB format for people with, you know, iPhones, iPads, everything now. Give it a try, it's just five short um, steps. It really isn't very difficult. Very cheesy ending there. Um. Okay, what, I, what I've just done is I've put some help sheets out here that, that give you those steps, so feel free to take some. Um, okay, so because we have this nice um, open source way to do it, does that mean we should just ignore Apple and iPads and iTunes U? Personally, that could be, uh, um, you could do that, but I, if, you know, if I was the principal of a college, a school, I would definitely keep them in sight, and I would consider jumping into iTunes U because... Um, it is, it's techie time, but it doesn't have to be any other expense. You could use Apple servers for this. Um, yeah, the, they're, they're trying to make these things more affordable. Apple is dropping its, its prices. I have a good reference here from, a, from a, good, um, uh, a good blog post, which says that Apple is playing the long game. They're trying to, um, uh, they're trying to kind of build up interest in the iPad while still gaining time to lower the prices. Of course, now we've got uh, the Microsoft Surface in there, so we'll see where that really goes. But basically, iPad is still number one in, a, in the world of education, and just simply, no one is doing anything else like iTunes U, even YouTube Edu. Um, I don't know, it's, it hasn't really gone, there's not really that much interest there. There's not too many universities that are in it. In iTunes U, we've got uh, over a thousand universities in it. So. If I, were, uh, if I were to give you some advice, I would say try EPUB and definitely consider iTunes U. I'm working on another GISC project now called Manufacturing Pests, in which I'm creating open learning materials that have to do with um, local history in Leicester. And, um, I just, and, and GISC is saying, of course it has to be open, has to be accessible. Please try to make it for as many devices as you can. So I was like, fine, okay. So I made mine for PDF, Mobi for Kindle, EPUB, Maybe I should make a .ibook version as well. And that could easily go on, um, on a VLE. You know, there's, there's, it, it isn't hard. It isn't too hard to do, to do that. And this is a picture of my uh, soon-to-launch University of Leicester um, iTunes U page, which uh, really needs to be prettied up, so I'm just going to move right along. But uh, basically, I'll just stop there. And I wonder if there are any questions, or I think I'm going to hand it over to Simon to facilitate. iBooks 2, um, so that is, that's the program that, yeah, that reads. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not even sure what version I have. Um, that may, might be true. I could see that would, I don't know the answer. I um, can see Apple possibly doing that, just like Amazon refuses to make Kindles to, to read um, EPUBs. 
But what I would suggest, and I didn't put this in any of my slides, but a key uh, tip is just get the Kindle app for iPad, and then you're sorted. Because, um, you know, you've got all bases covered. Actually, the Kindle app, I definitely should have put that in my slides, because you can get that for your desktop. You can get that for your laptop. So if you just get the free Kindle app, then, um, you know, right immediately, you can go on the Amazon store and buy an ebook and have it on your, de on your desktop computer or laptop immediately. Might be cheaper, definitely have it instantly. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple did that, but, you know, if they do that, then they're just kind of setting themselves up for, the they're marginalizing themselves, and the market will, will find a way. So, hey, Kindle app. 